this video is about SSL VPN with SonicWall. We will first do it with local users on the firewall, then we will switch to Active Directory users and groups. And make sure to stick around until the end, as I will also enable you to turn on security using the security services and also access rules. Hi, I'm Jean-Pierre Talbot, SC for SonicWall in Canada, helping customer and reseller get the most out of their network security solutions. If you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Also, all the link to the content I'll mention will be in the description box down below. So let's get started. First step, we'll do it very basic. We will create a local user on the firewall. Then we will set SSL VPN settings in the firewall. We'll show you how to download the NetExtender client. Then we'll connect and access few resources through the tunnel. I personally like this approach because I see it as a great way for an IT and men to be able to get into the office remotely to do maintenance or calls or whatever may be the reason to connect outside business hours to do work. So first go into the network menu and then under server setting and turn on the WAN so it allows inbound connection to the WAN interface for SSL VPN and it accepts. Next, we go into client setting and we edit the default device profile. Under network address IPv4, we need to create a new address object. That is a range of IP that the SSL VPN users will receive. They will be assigned an IP in that subnet. I personally like to assign them, assign them a range of IPs that are not used anywhere in my network. I personally feel it makes routing easier. Next in client route, we will select which subnet is accessible to them. Here you also do have tunnel all mode, which will force absolutely all traffic through the tunnel. And here I leave this off, meaning that internet access will go straight to the internet. And here I put the DNS server I have. So if they want to access anything using DNS name, it will work. And here, please note, we do have some cool settings for accessing using mobile device. Next, under device and local user, we will create a user. We'll call it Bob VPN. So give it whatever name you want. This is a local user on the firewall that will have VPN access. You must make it member of the built-in SSL VPN service group in order to give him access to connect. And here again, we will select which subnet he can access in my network and hit save. Next is testing. So I will disconnect from the corporate Wi-Fi and connect on the home Wi-Fi. So now I am on the internet and I'm no longer behind the firewall. So next step is to download the net extender client. We'll do it from the firewall. So here I have the external IP I have on my firewall and I'll connect using that IP address on port 4433, which is a default port, which you can change if you want. So I'll put the user Bob VPN and the password. And here, as you can see, I can download the NetExtender client. This is personally how I like doing it. I like downloading NetExtender from the firewall directly because it gives me two nice option. The first one, I do not need to send an EXC over email and being blocked for whatever reason. And also I make sure that the VPN client I provide is actually the exact version needed for the firewall. Of course, it's backward compatible, but providing the link to the firewall, make sure I do have the exact version that works with that firewall. Now I start the client, put the IP address and the port, username, password, and here need to type in local domain and I click connect. And now I am connected. Next thing is to test. I will do a few things on different resources that are on the internal network of my firewall that I allowed myself in. As you can see, I can ping those three different IPs. I'll try to connect web. So that's one of them. It's the QNAP. Another one, I believe, is a my brother printer. And I also do have a Lexmark printer. 
So as you can see, they are all accessible. Many will want to use NetExtender to allow people to work from home or anywhere it may be. Personally, if that's the case, I strongly advise you consider the SonicWall SMA product line. It is designed exactly for this. It has much more advanced feature like spike license, tunnel all. It has a nice web portal where it's HTML5. You can do remote desktop, map drive. You can access files. There is plenty of cool features you can do. It is a dedicated appliance for work from home. But if you only have a need for two, three people that may connect sometimes, I understand that you may want to leverage the VPN features of the firewall. If that's the case, many will want to use Active Directory integration so that users can log in to VPN using their Active Directory credentials. In the following segment, I assume that you already have Active Directory integration done on the firewall. If that's not the case, I would advise that you pause this video, go in the description box down below, and I've put a link to a video I've done on Active Directory integration. Once you got that done, come back here and just watch the following. So go into server settings and change the domain name for your domain name and hit accept. Then go into device and local users and group, go under local group and find the built-in SSL VPN service and go into member. And I personally like go in my active directory and create a group for SSL VPN. So I can just throw user in. So make sure that this active directory group is member of the built-in SSL VPN service group and confirm that it has the VPN access to the subnet you need. Just like we did for Bob VPN local user, as you can see, we make sure that the subnet was in there. So what we will do, we will find our group that we have in Active Directory for SSL VPN and make sure that this group have access to the subnet we want, just like we did for Bob VPN local user. And next is to test this thing. So again, I will disconnect for, from corporate Wi-Fi and connect on my home Wi-Fi so I am outside of the firewall, I will be able to connect and test. So again, I'll put the IP address on port 4433, put the Active Directory user member of the group and hit connect. And as you can see, I am successfully connected. I'll run a few tests just to make sure it works. And as you can see, I can ping again the three IP, which are the same, the QNAP and both printers. And I'm able to get to the web interface of the QNAP, the same for both printers as well. And the most important thing to me is security. And I'm not talking about the security of the VPN itself. It has strong encryption and everything, so that's good. What I'm concerned is the security of the data going through that VPN. Because if you think about it, if you use the VPN client for work from home, where you have employees with a corporate device working from home, the VPN we have on the firewall is a on-demand VPN. That means that when the employee is done working, he's going to disconnect the VPN and then he's going to be on his home wireless network, which has no security features whatsoever and sharing the same Wi-Fi network as the kid's PC that surely is infected with viruses. So I'm concerned about the traffic going through the VPN the next day when the employee connects back VPN. So we'll turn on security features and also turn on access rules to only allow the traffic we need in that VPN so we can make sure that we can minimize the risk of infection spreading. So go into access rules. Make sure you select the SSL VPN zone going to the target of your VPN, which in my case is the IoT zone. As you can see, we do have a default policy allowing everything to be accessed into the IoT zone from my SSL VPN and services is any. So all port and all protocol are open. I personally like changing that default policy from any to only ping, which is ICMP. As you can see, this policy cannot be deleted. So that's kind of my way to change it and make it useful to me. Next, I will create another policy to only allow the traffic I want. 
So the source will match what the default policy is, which is the range of IP we've set previously. And the destination will be the target server I want. And in my case, it's the QNAP with the IP address ending with that three. And the port, I will select HTTPS. So I'll be specific on exactly what I want to be allowed in my VPN. Now, as you can see, we do have two policies here. The default one that allow pings to everything and a HTTPS policy that only allow access to the QNAP. Next, we'll test this out. So we'll disconnect from the corporate Wi-Fi and again, log in to the home Wi-Fi. So again, we put credentials and connect. Now we will be able to ping everything again. So I can ping the QNAP, I can ping, and I can ping both printers. Next, as you can see, I am able to access the QNAP web interface, but if I try to access the printers, it is not gonna work because there is no policy anymore to allow this traffic. So go into objects and zones, find the SSL VPN zone, click on edit and turn on the security services on it. Please make sure that you have enable and configure each of those security services. I will put a link in the description box down below on how to set those different security services. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked that video as much as I like making it. If that's the case, give it a thumbs up and see you in the next one.